to understand the state of our uh, not the state the position we are in in terms of the different organizations and the um, alignment to a whole lot of these in the future to understand uh, organizations that meet and expectations uh, and so hopefully that will be able to be updated the council in the not too distant future just just, um, just a few more um, a few more um, Matters to just check on and provide that more fulsome update. Thank you. No other matters for the most of us. If not, I'll put the motion and move that to Red Red Board of Committee. If I would please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Extraordinary and urgent should supplemental reports. Um, um, Questions? Um, so, Councillor McDonald had a question that he believes has been dealt with in the last year. Yeah, it's an annoying meeting. We haven't got much to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, I had two questions which I communicated um, to the committee members and the members. And that's the fact both of them have been answered, but it shouldn't dealt with it. At, at the meeting, the first one was related to uh, the Number of qualified commissioners on the ARA available to us to hear the hearing. So um, I have a query about whether any had people, as it, as it happened, uh, Halligan gave me a written response to that, which you, I'm sure we'll talk about. But I also spoke to some Tammy people yesterday who assured me that they have enough of qualified staff members and, and members. But the reason that they haven't been available is that they are. Inflected because they are making submissions on most of the intent applications are being made. Bruce, would you like to expand on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good question about how our know, corporate commission generally and the EU component of that. Um, as you're probably aware, um, to be a hearing commission, you have to have undertaken the Ministry of Environment's making good decisions training program. There's two elements of that there's a, there's a general one and there's one specific to a chairperson. So, if you're going to chair a hearing, you have to have the chair's enforcement as uh, Councillor Cook has. Um, now, with regard to the number of Roman South and councillors that have been through that training, obviously, we're looking to make use of those capabilities as we can. And uh, Councillor Cook has been recently part of the uh, Foreman Farms here in Panel. Councillor Ludley love those due to be part of the uh, Happy Grove upcoming hearing, which I'll get to later on in the board. Um, as far as the but, uh, council people then is also registered to undertake their training in the future as well. So um, there's some capability within the councillors to fulfill that function. We have a number of independent hearing commissioners who do this sort of work for a living, who we use regularly. Quite often we use an uh, uh, individual commission sitting alone who's got a chair endorsement. Or alternatively, a panel of independents or a blend of independents and councillors. And I guess our, probably our, the latter is our preference if we can do that and we've got available to do it. Um, we do have sometimes a bit of tension around the applicant's desire for a hearing to happen quite quickly uh, versus availability of um, commissioners to act in that capacity. And or sometimes we have conflicts of interest where 
our involvement in a particular project and another arm of Environment Southland may mean that it's not really appropriate that the Environment Southland Council is sitting as a commission on that panel. So it's a bit of a horses for course issue. Getting to the specifics of um, capability around Māori and put into more perspectives on decision making. Um, Mike Trent and six puppets of Uruna representatives undertook the Making Good Decisions program last year. As the chairman has mentioned, sometimes um, it's difficult for those Papatu Buruna representatives to sit on a panel if Teo Marama or Teo and Otahu is making a submission, because there could be a perception of conflict of interest where you have uh, someone who is an Otahu considering an application where Otahu is either the applicant or the submitter. So we have used um, commissioners to bring a Maori perspective from outside the region, like Reg Pot, who we've used for a couple of hearings. There is, um, like, might be Nadi Perot, one of the, um, you know, the tribal affiliations from outside of Murahiku. Uh, but there's an opportunity, I guess, for um, some of the qualified commissioners from the public to be running in Southland to act in that capacity outside of Southland. And that would be good uh, training and development for them. There is a uh, line of dialogue around the consent managers group about giving some more specific training to those people who've done the preliminary sort of basic course because it's quite a big step up to do a TBA course and a few assignments and then get chucked into a $500 million consent year potentially with some of them. So there's um, some work being done on seeing if there can be some um, augmented training to help that sort of bridge that gap. So certainly to a long story short life to that opportunity to try and make as much use as we can of the local qualified commissioners that we have. Um, but sometimes conflicts of interest and or needing a specific technical skill set mean that we're going outside the region. Thank you. Well, you know, the the um, external commission was a lot of that was an extremely um confident and people. I just I just uh, thought we should make every effort to use local people when we can. Thank you for that um, response. My second question was um, noting that the council has um, agreed to put out the revised fees and charges schedule um, for consultation. But I'm just, uh, I was just wondering what avenues we, the council have used to broadcast that for people. This region so that they can actually take the opportunity to, to respond. And Bruce said he replied to that and I can do it. Would you like to speak to that one? Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to be a bit faster than the last response. Um, yeah, we, we preemptively uh, advised our consultants for and that lodged most of our consent applications and deal a lot with Donna's team that these fees and charges were being reviewed. So, we sent a specific email to the 40 or so consultants that we deal with regularly who lodge most of our applications. It's been public notice in the South of Times. It's on the front page of our website. Um, we've also done a targeted media release when the fees and charges were approved. Uh, we put a post on our Facebook page and uh, we're also putting regular updates on our website. So hopefully that will um, give people an opportunity, first an awareness around this, but secondly, they take the opportunity to provide whatever comment they wish to make. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I will ask about the previous question around the commissioners. Um, is it, and, and you might help with this, Mr. Chair, um, around the visibility of this council to have those members to sit in on those um, applications? Is that is that really important um, that we seem to be part of the entire process? Will provide expertise right across the board. You know, the horses for courses, as you're saying. Just to well, me. my opinion, it is important. We seem to be part of a, you know, visibly part of the process, not to divorce ourselves from, from, from some of those things, but I hope you know, I think Bruce's response suggested that we'll make an effort to include people, but if, if you're going to be a commissioner, you have to go and do the do the training and have a gap to speak with it. Just, just, just on that, I, I think it is important to have a number of councillors that are 
framed the course itself actually gives you quite a good grasp of the RMA and the log we seem to be upgraded on immediately after the uh, the, cha the changes. But you know, as uh, Bruce has said, that in some cases and it's not appropriate. But I think Paul is getting quite small at the moment as chair. I think chair doesn't can't get involved in, in those because people might come to me to, to, and might have a conflict. But at the moment, I think our numbers are down a bit at the moment. And you can get, you can go to the website and you can see who is actually um, qualified at the moment. And some lines lapsed since I've been in the chair. I can also, um, ICC and SDC also have their own commissioners to buy their numbers, so that's a little gradual in that case. Um, I see some other comments in the new one. Um, and as Frank uh, says, there's a, a database of all of us who've got qualifications and what she will be done. They also send out requests um, across the country of somebody in the my so the the skill set that they see that out around those of us who've got the qualifications. So that's a reason we've got the I think with uh, Council Ludlow and Council Christine Enzies from SDC um, sat on a panel with an independent chair, Alan Cubitt, who's a very experienced area commissioner from Dunedin, to consider a quarry matter in rural South. I think that was really good. It was a joint hearing, and we had elected reps from both organisations and a, an independent chair, and that was, I think, a good process. An example of where it may not be appropriate to have councillors sitting would be the recent South Port application where for the um, capital duty program in the Bluff Channel, where uh, obviously we're a significant shareholder in South Port, so Brian and Southland would be seen to have a vested interest in a particular outcome. So in that instance, we engage two independent commissioners, Sharon McGarry, who we use regularly for Christchurch, and uh, Dr. Rob Leifering, who's a very coastal expert from Nelson. So it is a bit of horses, horses, but looking to make as much use of local input as, as we can. Well, uh, let's say thank you, Chair, for these questions. I think really important topics. I've just got one question for Bruce, and I don't know the answer. So, and um, how frequently are the um, good decision um, training run by, I assume, I presume by MFB? And is that one of the obstacles to getting more people through it? Because oh, the number of regularly are. And they are running quite regularly. Right, 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 right. I guess I think that to consider, I'm not sure it's a huge factor, but as we're considering is there is a reasonable percentage of cost. Yeah. Um, and some councils have chosen not to have any of the councillors appointed in this year's solely, solely independent commissions all the time. Um, so there's a bit of, I guess, a political choice in, in that to some extent, but they run the courses quite frequently. Once you become um, if you have the make of good decisions, accreditation, keep it, you've got to do a refresher course every year. I mean, it's three, three years. Yeah, three years. And that's about, I think the last time I looked at a refresher course was about $1,380 plus just, and I think the main course is about $2,800 or something like that. Could you go through? Cheers, Hansen. I think that is a key consideration, and I did my refresher course. I was the only person in the room that actually sat on it. I've said it on the hearing in the RPS. So, if the indication from the council is that we will use uh, local councils when it is appropriate, I think mean, that's an incentive that to all these people sitting there are doing for the minimum use. And so, I guess that's that's one of the reasons for some people saying, well, it's expensive and it's quite time consuming. If we don't get a chance to use the school, we're not going to do it again. So, we're getting an indication, I think, that we're, we're practical that we try and have. Uh, be local on so I'll encourage some of their councils who haven't done it to actually have a train over the next 12 months. And one of the things that we can do is we can resend um, through democracy services um, for more information. So, can you? Yeah, I did that at the last meeting, but do it. Uh, one or two people told me that put off making a decision because the RMA is going to be changed to legislation. Is and for the house, that's going to take a couple of years at least, in my information, before we can check in on the meantime. Maybe you're not going to be on the list. Yeah, I think that's 
Thank you for your question, Ben. Yeah, um, I think that's really important that Nick will just see too. If you did an education, that, that's why I haven't come forward, basically do all the training and you know, uh, I'm there for three years and gone in this sort of but I'll be happy to step forward, maybe come in and do a bit of a talk to the council or the here and an indication um, that you know people don't put their hand up. Good idea. Mm. Yeah. Learn you the old book. It's quite a little book, man. So, <laughs> well, it's a good learning experience, but anyway. Um, yeah, the yeah, yeah, plan, the, the plan chain hearing coming up, and there's only two of us here, and that council is really need to be involved in plan chain hearing for our region. Uh, at the moment, we're not anyone sort of capable or qualified to do that. Um, I think it's important to have. All the people I don't, I would hate to see people from outside the council making all the decisions. If you can avoid it. Well, thank you for that. And from the director, being the council was the course. No report, so I don't have one. General Manager Integrated Catchment Management Report uh, on item nine. And item one under that is the Biosecurity Regulatory Report. That's all I've got to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, I have you, Maya. I'm Catherine McLaughlin. So I generally look after the Marine Biosecurity and Biodiversity Portfolio in Ali's team. So stepping in as uh, Acting Biodiversity and Biosecurity Manager while Ali's on holiday. Um, first of all, I just wanted to make a quick correction to the table that we've got first under exemption activities. Um, we've recently transferred our reporting system over to IRIS and there's been a few uh, little issues with some of the expiry dates moving that across. So um, the total current for being tax is actually 23. Uh, there were zero new ones this quarter, so that should be uh, zero rather than two. And the total active undaria exemption is Two rather than four. So we have had to expire um, and have not been renewed. Um, I'll accept the rest of the paper as read and just highlight a few key points. Um, in terms of the exemptions, uh, just sort of give a quick overview of what they are. So, being with cats, you know they're an exclusion, uh, sorry, a progressive containment species in the South So, you have to have an exemption to be able to keep a bingle cat, and that just basically means that the cats be fixed and registered with ease. Um, the Andaria ones at the moment, we've got one sitting with the Ministry of Primary Industries for a tool development project that worked alongside Jobs for Nature in Breaksy Sound. And the other one is a commercial um, harvest from artificial structures on the South End Coast, excluding fields and Stewart Island. And then we also have one wallaby, which is Queen's Park, and the Contortive Pine is um, another NPI research permit that's up in the sky. Uh, Clinical passes. Quick summary table, and this is the same sort of thing that we report through to FNG, so we thought we'd include it um, in the council forum going forward. You'll see there's been an increase in CVPs uh, for January, February, and March. Um, this coincides with some additional field work we did in Milford Sound, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and an increase in our advertising as well. So we're promising to see there's a greater uptake of CVPs uh, over summer. The Divisional Compliance Activities, we've had an increased number of inspections as well. So for marine pests, that's because of the Milford Sound trip that we did. And uh, the test plant ones are routine inspections carried out by Jolie's team. Um, a lot of work was done on Rafiota, Stewart Island, and just standard annual inspections of old man's beard, Pimbalo Strike, Fuzzier, and Henry Cleveland. Uh, so something I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail is it was the first time we've done a trip like this is into Milford Sound. So we did a joint agency, uh, sorry, a joint team trip with Lyndon's team, the Harbour Master Crew, ourselves and Donna's compliance team. Uh, we went into Milford for a couple of days and we inspected structures, pots, natural substrate and tailed uh, multiple vessels while we were out there. From a biosecurity perspective, there were 42 vessels that we interacted with. 31 hulls were inspected, so we don't inspect trailer bolts, boats, which is why there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, no marine pests were found, which was really promising, but we did have a, quite a low compliance rate in terms of clean vessel passes. Um, the reasons for that we think are one, because of COVID 19, there were a lot of the commercial operators just getting back up and running, so potentially just a bit of oversight as they were getting their businesses back up and running and not having really 
you know, thought about things like that. Some of them may have lapsed and they've just forgotten about renewing them. A lot of trailer boat operators have been in there um, who may have not have necessarily been in fields before chasing um, some of the big fish species that we're now finding in fields and like bluefin tuna. Um, anecdotally, we've heard that there's been hundreds of these things coming from all over the South Island um, and they don't necessarily know the rules or are our usual target audience for communications. Um, the enforcement action ranged from education right through warning letters and cost recovery. So that's our standard response under the 530 Act. Um, the other thing I just thought I'd point out is that we've also been supporting Donna's team with some work. So my team for Dogs for Nature, as you know, have been out in the field and for um, significant periods of time over the summer period. So we've been doing some permitted activity inspections, so logging the location of a lot of the structures and mooring throughout the field. And so we can pass that up on to Donna's team and just trying to work more across the divisions and use our fund um, most effectively. Yeah, so happy to take questions. Thank you. So Queen Beckett passed with what the criteria for that? Like a lot of travel boats and you're going over to Melbourne, going out to the tender and other yes. fish. Yep, so they all need to use the parts as well. Commercial boats, fishing boats, uh trailer boats, and even down to kayaks need to clean your passes as well. So that's something we're just having a bit of a think about and working with the guardians on as well is how do we start targeting some of these people that we don't seem to be very effective in finding at the moment, potentially from out of the region and things like that. So we'll be back at the boat show this year, which we're hoping will um, I suspect it's about awareness because I know a couple of people are aware of being regular and probably quite unaware that they need to do that in the Yeah. So we've tried the boats, they've tried them over with them and they yeah. want to do something. Yeah, so I was on the boat ramp for a morning while we were in there, and um, yeah, just a lot of them didn't even know the rules or didn't know they need one. So um, that's another option is trying to, try to get in there as much as we can and getting that info out. Yeah, um, since you're already in the trip, you've got most people are aware. What are the rules around cleaning the fish and around the boat ramp? And the harder on hearing stories from people saying that um, sharks are very. Yeah. Uh, like you just need to spray on the water and it'll start coming out water on them, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I'm un unsure of the current rules around that at the moment. Yeah, so we had um, divers in the water at that, um, mm -hmm. the, the fishing wharf, fishermen's wharf, and they were swimming seven gillers in there. Yeah. Yeah, um, water on them. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely, I'm not um, across the fisheries rules per se, but I know you've got a land to blue pod and some of that I'm sure and that's where the issues are coming. I think Lyndon, do you know anything further than that? No, that, that's that, Catherine summarised it um, really well. It's um, they have to bring the fish in on the whole state and um put under that the like the boat ramp and unfortunately most of them are leaving the carcasses behind at the boat ramp rather than taking them with them. And hence this is where the problem's coming from. Plus, tourists going and feeding the sharks as well. Which is yeah, we need tourists to be while we're there wanting to. I've been told they could throw a chip and throw aside. But what I've noticed up uh, the road is they have actually bait stations built in the around marinas, places like that, where red fishes can go in and they can fill everything there and there are booms and everything well set up. Perhaps there's some big great brand of bait ramps. Well, we can, we can do problem wise. Fish regularly out in the strait, and, and they changed the rules saying you had to bring the fish in. So, I'm sure my garden was full of fish and stuff, and then you know, I had to put some rubbish in. I got turned away from the dump when I had a bin, <laughs> a bin of remains. Uh, so, saying, What can I do with it? Yeah, we used to just chuck them overboard in the area where we were fishing. Mm. So, just, you know, by all good intentions, but that creates some issues. The issue for uh, the fisheries people is they want to be able to measure the fish. Yeah. Good hole. Yes, yeah, so I, I saw the number that didn't have clean holes, so we would serve the fact that a lot of them are on trailers. The risk is probably a lot lower. Uh, I guess a big concern is ones that have come from the bluff or, you know, a bit of area or further the field. So it's, um, you, most of those organisms are sitting out in the pressure, you tend to die from my understanding. But that, that comment um, from the Harbour Master, I wonder if we should look at the possibility of having some bins 
no one possibly even blood. So it's probably fall within the um, marine bee um, criteria, and if it's if it's going to help uh, cause un unintended consequences, uh, it may well be worth doing. Okay, that would be a good thing to have. You know, from a fisherman's point of view, then you've got to empty them. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting concept isn't it? because basically you're interacting with an animal changing your behaviour. And you would have seen over there too the, the recreational fish in our triple axle trailers. You see them all lined up at the car park, multiple people on eight metre and nine metre boats. Um, so they're going out there and they're catching a lot of fish. Yeah. Just to clarify, um, Nicole, in your comment, we. Um, Inspect 31 hulls, but we didn't find any marine fish, so clean hulls, just um, just a paper it sort of thing. Yeah, it, 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 Councillor Guyton has been waiting patiently in the background to put his hand up. Very patiently. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so the biosecurity issues interest me a great deal, and I appreciate the focus on marine uh, organisms that might be um, arriving in the area because of our particularly because of our marine heat waves. But as a, um, as a plant person as a, and a gardener involved in a lot of fo uh, gardening forums, getting a lot of information from the far north where um, there's a great deal going on because of increased temperatures up there and also cyclonic behavior. So it's, it seems similar to the um, events that are happening in the ocean down here. Up, up there in the far north, there are serious incursions of uh, organisms such as the fall army worm, which and also the guava moth, which are really devastating crops up in the far north. And I don't really see the ripples of it uh, in terms of consciousness down here in Southland, but it seems to be flagging things to come and things to come very serious, uh, very very soon. One of the issues up there is with kaikuyu grass, and there's an, uh, I'm not sure of the name of it, but there's, a, there's an insect that's destroying kaikuyu, which sounds like a good thing, except kaikuyu is a grass. And given that Southland is a um, grass-based economy, are we, um, my question is, uh, are you keeping tabs on what's happening up there? Because it's not far away. It's only at the top of the next island, whatever they call that, uh, and it won't take long uh, to move down here, given the rate at which fall army worm is moving down the country. I just wonder, are we actively watching what's happening up there? Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah, so I can sort of only comment from a marine point of view personally. Um, we work closely with uh, ORC and ETN around some of these pieces are starting to travel uh, south in the marine area, and I'm Fairly really certain my colleagues would be the same. I'll just invite Jolie, who's the um, who's plant team leader, to comment and um, she's got anything further around. Thank you. Yeah, I guess um, it's more just as Catherine's doing, talking with Ethan um, in Otago in regards to that and doing the national working bits and pieces to find out what is happening um, and just be yeah, trying to learn more about what is happening. But yeah, there is even even in that digital plant down here, we've seen changes, um, these frosts, new growth. Yeah, lots of changes happening. It's yeah, it'll be definitely interesting going ahead and how we keep on top of the um invasions that could be coming south once the winter starts is definitely going to be a challenge. Um, and that's we're working with EPN and Otago seems to be able to at the moment. Okay, I appreciate that. I just wonder if we need to be more connected to the councils further north, because they're the ones that are feeling the brunt of it right now. And I think that the situation seems to have sped up a lot to me in the way that these pest organisms move down the country is much, much quicker than it ever was before. So I'm just wondering, are we actively involved with, with those far north or northern councils? On this issue? Um, on biosecurity issues overall, we try to um, national biosecurity um, working groups as well as the um, working groups in that. So there's kind of those avenues here that a lot of discussions are happening um, those regions. Is that yeah, 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 okay. yeah, some of these issues. So 
yeah, that's kind of where we kind of get most information what information you can do them and also where you can see their Okay. Yeah, yeah um, uh, Joel, thank you, Joel. Just for the point that I've been made with the uh, um, guys, and um, we sit on a biomanagers forum, Johnny Luke, too, which is a multi sort of regional cancer sector that interacts with Biosecurity New Zealand and MPI. Um, but there is a there is a another forum that has a uh, high level of tax uh, from MPI and Biosecurity New Zealand. And I think there is uh, a topic on that in terms of the future looking. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it upon myself to actually raise that question within that forum and bring some information back. Because I do think right, thank you. the point you made is what the future uh, could look like and how you, uh, so I think uh, that's space yep. that is important uh, place to be. So I'll, I'll bring that back to the next All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, and you know, you you get that information out of somebody. What's up? This plant, this plant. Is that what you um, yes, yeah, so that can go to the key part of the family and 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 the key part of the family so, so I logged a one because I thought I thought people were used but it might have been that other part that looked like people were used because I was driving down the road and I didn't stop. So I eased it on and, you know, to see, to see how that would go. Um, but, it, but it just disappeared into the ether. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but also, you know, that some of these actually are really good by like, Um, I'll take the board's read. Um, it's been quite a few of these items that are updated and probably hold up your attention. Um, probably firstly, moving through to the top of page 13, I'll talk about uh, Regulation 24 um, under National Environment and Management and the additional requirements that are imposed on consent holders around and consent authorities around the fact that we can't grant a consent. Um, and this, we're satisfied that it won't result in an increase in coming out of the roads across the catchment and, and in concentrations across the catchment. But that is true, uh, meaning that we're qualified needing to ask for additional information from the consent applicants. Just an aside to that, yesterday we got an update from the Ministry of the Environment. Um, you may recall that the overseer nutrient modeling tool was subject to a National Science Advisory Panel investigation a couple of years back. And what that sort of found in a nutshell was that the overseer nutrient modeling tool was being used by regional councils around decision making processes that it wasn't very originally set up to do. So that's resulted in a panel moving forward with some recommendations and it's anticipated that there could be a new uh, nutrient risk assessment tool available about November this year. So that, if and when that actuates, that would be quite useful um, additional resource for. Us and also for applicants to be able to use a, an updated tool um, to report their applications and to support the consideration of these activities. Now, moving down, uh, page 13, I uh, mentioned the reference to the uh, plan change five that's been moving through around commercial surface water activities. And uh, we'd be aware that there's been a hearing of that scheduled for uh, late June in Tiana. 
Uh, there were 20 submissions in relation to that planning change, and quite a range of views, interesting submissions, lots of good quality comments made. And the panel has been appointed to hear that um, to make sure the commission is accounted for. This is good. Bottom of page 13, as mentioned here, there's some ongoing scrutiny through our processes around uh, groundwater and nitrate levels, and we've probably also seen some other recent media coverage. Uh, Southland coverage and uh, drive green piece around that issue. So it remains quite a topical uh, issue and, uh, and has a little bit of concern. And so uh, the concerns relating to linkages to um, color frequencies and that sort of thing. So it remains an issue that we're very live to and it's certainly an issue that uh, is being legally raised through the selection processes. Uh, moving through. Um, the bottom of sort of page 14, just talking about legislative reform. Um, it's gone a little bit quiet in that part of the nature of the environment. Um, you'll remember the false and bonfire. We love that. There are various things going for the bonfire. But um, a lot of the RMA reform wasn't part of that. So we in the future still seem to be ready to progress those reforms and they are moving through the system. Uh, we haven't had a most recent update on that previously. Um, other than one that I gave the last meeting. So, my understanding is that the, the, the reform program continues and a lot of work being done behind the scenes, but we haven't had a, a recent update. And the same applies to the National Policy Statement for Indigenous Biodiversity, which has been on the drawing board since the late 1990s. That the government did release a Doji draft last year, which Environment Southland submitted on, and we highlighted that we've got the positives in that. That document, but there's some quite significant duties imposed on regional councils with associated costs around identification and monitoring and enforcing, etc. So, um, again, this doesn't seem to be there's been no stepping back from the desire to progress that national policy statement, but there hasn't been any recent update in the document that we confirmed that yesterday as well. And that I'm going to be doing the first um, just moving through bottom page 14, we talked about coordination initiatives, and I'll probably give some further kudos to the work that uh, Catherine and Donna's team have been doing around applying the approaches to compliance and enforcement, as well as Lyndon. Um, I guess there's a level of scrutiny and tension around the level of presence that we have in Melbourne. It's a huge area, it's 200 kilometres, some of it from the head office, so it's, it's a large patch to try and the police dog and have a regular frequency, and, and I think we've got to um, maximize the power of the team on that. And then, um, some good work being done in that space, and also actually look at other alternative technologies in the future to, to effectively monitor that area. And that also comes through in the dialogue that we had with the field and marine guardians. I went to their most recent meeting on Tuesday, very interesting meeting. Um, the guardians are very passionate and knowledgeable bunch. They are also conscious of our limited resources and they quite rightly want us to ensure that we've got an ongoing presence, both educational and digitally, make sure that people are doing what they should be doing and aren't doing what they should be doing. And that's not easy in a remote part of the province. Uh, moving down to uh, page 15, this touched again on workforce as an ongoing challenge. We've got a couple of vacancies in the consent team at the moment. Uh, we're keeping on top of the timeframes and workloads at the moment with a little bit of help from external consultants. But um, it's a reasonably fragile situation, and we've got quite a lot of patients in the system. So we're seeking to recruit um, at the moment the potential promising interview. We'll see where that goes. But um, it's a challenging space at the moment. Um, we've got approximately 200 senior planning and consenting vacancies across the country. And the six managers for them being able to avoid that same issue. So um, it's sort of holding together at the moment, but it's reasonably dragged on. Um, probably just touching on a couple of other things. Um, obviously, there's been uh, ongoing work in the intensive integration space. Uh, Donald's team's doing some awesome work out in the field and, and, and the monitoring side of that. Um, we've had around about 70 applications watched with us. Um, Generally, those are moving through the system. Um, the ones that require consent do uh, require written approval from part of the And um, we've had some feedback on that, but that's the process. And um, we're sort of holding the firm on that, looking to try to um, 
make that process as smooth as we can. Uh, all applications to date that have been lodged have been approved and been approved within time frames. And they vary quite a bit from uh, individual farm with the only trigger being the slope thing, where they can sometimes fall within the beam from that activity for a period. We can process that quite quickly. Through to large scale, large farms with big areas and intensive wind grazing. Again, they've been approved, but with quite often with quite extensive sort of conditions. Um, just a couple of things that have changed in the consent schedule of the bank since this was last dealt with. Um, Stuff that you on page 18. Uh, sort of halfway down here, I talked about the table growth during the application, uh, which is scheduled to be heard on the 23rd of May, and we just we just need to start the report for that. The applicant has requested a deferral of that hearing um, until probably no earlier than the first week of July to uh, get us further information. Um, the field of discovery during the application uh, talks about progress into the decision on the delegated authority. I approved that on yesterday. And uh, the South Pacific Meats application at the bottom of page 18 again was progressing to the decision. I approved that this morning. Um, so, generally speaking, things are progressing within time frames, but um, not a lot of patent system is used for what I'm saying. Happy to take the questions. Thank you for that. Question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm um, really pleased you put on the bottom of page 13 about groundwater, groundwater night mode. Um, and why it's out there that the Lumsden Hall and Greenpeace come to the Lumsden Hall. And there's a lot of people who feed that double digit numbers coming in on the samples. And of course, we know the samples are samples that you don't know. But there is uh, a lot of concern, and I think uh, this council, people need to have them start having mature. Discussion around this, it's not a farming issue, it's a, it's a public health issue, and we need to approach it as such. Um, people who are like as an activist, if you want to talk about these issues, but it's not, it goes back to public health. So, as a government, this organization too, I do have a concern in the future on liability, and um, plus it goes on the back to the public health sphere. Um, it's not really real to people in the world, so we need to make sure that we're prepared for that in the future. And I know right now that we're demonstrating that the PA plan change that we will be taking steps to write that. So, yeah, I'm pleased to put that in there. We shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. A lot of people won't talk about it. Appreciate that. We were experienced, you know, as I said, in, in some of our mainly farming related activity applications. We were receiving submissions where the submitted raised as concerns. So, clearly, at the forefront was a number of people's minds. We did have a specific visit from the Green Peace on that topic, and we did a robust but amicable dialogue with them as well. So, that was probably good to talk about it. And we also sort of flagged the issue through to the science team that it's something that we're hearing about. So. Um, you know, on those lines the next place. So I won't try and talk about that science element, but it's certainly something that, you know, just a, a simple community has strong concerns about it, and maybe it's an opportunity for us to communicate that stance and what we're doing around monitoring. Yeah, and just, yeah, you know, that mature discussion is really important. It's not a farming issue, it's not being an activist, um, it's not being political, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about the lives. Actually, I'm saying the same issue that we have to go to the Green Peace. I'm just saying, look at it. The fact that we didn't really put the idea of what we did about the accuracy and also some of the plans that are getting to the last, but not the scouting of the health issues and that sort of lower. But in some ways, it's still a bit that's more than. And the other thing you know, those are the applicants for um, the applicants for things where they're opening um, things that's where the last couple of weeks have been a bit of a rush for the police start. Yeah, the police start to start, start when that's probably been through right across the country. I think um, like right in Canberra and RIC and themselves, like they know like probably some of the key affected provinces and um, which in 
the last pound here, so maybe we can reset the case for the new birth date and got quite a number more. They probably got over double the number that we've had. But certainly we had a uh, rush, but we've had an increase in the last couple of weeks with the uh, May date for the trip. So we've got a bit more publicity around it in a couple of other reviews and some reports and things like that. Um, but, you know, the, the it's been a small increase rather than a rush. Well, just we've had an observation and so it's come a long way over the last few years from where we were with different versions of where we are now. And when we get it set, that's been pretty much for the entire city. Yeah, we're in the situation, I think, we've done that as well, but um, certainly been a significant improvement in uh, practice across this province. By the same token, that's uh, an ongoing focus here on the trust. Making sure that those improvements are maintained, that um, people are doing the right thing. I think the city is very conscious of that, um, but it's probably something we need to be publicised as well. And Donna Stern's got a really good program, good program as well. And we're going over the first one to the Norwoods. I'm assuming you're going to talk about that in your report. Yeah, yeah just on there. Are we seeing um, a little bit free? Uh, reaction to the amount of baggage on grass for winter and this year. I've got a, a, a rule work around um, that people not to see uh, because it seems quite prevalent to me driving around that you've got an awful lot of bales on grass. Yeah, pretty much um, yeah, certainly there has been increasingly activity and um, it's also not necessarily a negative. Um, there's been um, a number of uh, we'll chop cell is one um south bugger the other day, which I was looking at, but looked like it had a really good um turnout of it. good people and sort of best practice around it. So um obviously the water and land plan decisions have some conflict around grass winter systems that are relevant. Um but yeah, it's certainly an increasing activity now. I'm not sure if that's a a workaround or an intended way of Doing things now, but we might need to look at that in terms of where that sits in that compliance program. I just want to add, I've got some of the concerns that you may not be able to set the whole event and the activity, but setting the returns, get the water, it's still going to be a bit. Something that we're going to be following up on, and we might do that at some point. Reasonable winter will probably be fine, but you're very good to winter. When I expect to be a good day, then I'm going to know what the plan B is. Yes, but not really just in this one, but I've noted on your financial accounting. Will the budget implications? No. Well, I just noted on page 15, uh, read that some of the revenues there are the conservation order and the and reallocation, but yes, that is the same, isn't it? Yes, we're going to sit here. We've got a project team who kind of would like to be able to do for experience of swimming with Southern, who's done a lot of work in the group, and John Rawls has been. Probably the key people here that can drive in there and drive all the consent holders. And I guess the desired outcome from that is that ideally um, we would be able to recalibrate the consents collaboratively with the parties involved rather than having them out to buy a group. And at last count, I heard there was some good will to do that from the consent holders as well. And it's a good project to be made. Through one on one type of discussions and into a, a big forum as well. And the hope is that we could get, if we could be a, an agreed collective reallocation, that we could get the facts to agree to the end of the consents in a collaborative way. Yeah, I think that's very briefly getting to the reasons of the content of what they are. I, I would like to even bring in an update as to the public on that kind of information around that because there are uh, some ongoing conversations with the group that in the group that will hopefully result in both the music and the better. I was just going to 
But it's just that I'm going to be here in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, I'm wondering what I've got from the one who wants you to look at 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 the uh, talking about the rollover of consents in small towns across the region, you know, expiring over the next 18 months. Um, and we got linkages into the regional forum's report on the significant amount of that report. The recommendations came back, um, like far reaching stuff in the future. There, are you, is the council starting to integrate those into their thinking of what the future might be like? So, so the question is, are we taking that into account for forms of recommendations when we're reissuing consents for the future and for the time frames in that? Or is, are we not at that stage yet? Yes, yeah, that's a, a good question. Um, obviously, sort of the, um, at a macro level, the forum was educating and what it's so for transferring rather than the simple waste of the discharges. That go to the water from one side of the to the discharge for land. Some of the watch taken by just in recent time from Piana, we had a previously a discharge from the ground sewage system into the Upper Aurora, which we need to write down and we need to do the super. And that for a, a lengthy process was transferred to a discharge for land down that part of the country. So at least the poor are saying that. And as we're paying the funeral, but that's what the long term future should look like. The PAs are in an interesting space at the moment because they have a big issue with how the old three water sinks and shake up, shake up, and boost down every flux rural piece of water. And some of the dollars we've been having has been with those territorial authority, those three names, et cetera, who are, they have the sense due to expire now, but they're not sure that the road is going to be moving forward. So sometimes they're looking to make some interesting components that now certainly my bit of breathing space um, to consider what what the role is on. Yeah, you know, shifting out and this is probably even a small one, uh needs to be discharged from the state of water to discharge the land is no small feat. You've got to buy some land, you've got to go through an extensive process. Often those adjacent neighbors to the land are you know, not cool about it, etc. etc. Et so it's a challenging space. Really appropriate that we start socializing those discussions that that will be the future, most probably to be the future. Yeah, we will see Kim. I think that some of the senior as the territorial authorities have probably been doing that to some extent with these communities, but it's probably something that we need to look here on. So we can introduce a reasonably consistent. But I, I think that I don't know that some of the uncertainty around the policy and ownership probably would be helpful more. Some <laughs> What's exactly mm -hmm. the point of 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 the the point of 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 the and review of uh, consent across where we can show that many of the service equipment like the funds are not compliant, haven't been looked at, they haven't been made ahead of the under one contact level. Are we are we better part of the ones that we've got the South and District and Main Board of the KLC are being made a problem on the existing object? We have this year increased the monitoring that we've been doing on the first of the 
um, the few sort of moves that I do will be at the consent sessions and also at the site visits. So potential is there to see my complaints and what we've not seen before, but at the moment they are looking in place. Mm -hmm. Um, the Um, 
what's going on in the CMS. So I want to think about the data there. But it sort of feels a little bit far, but it's we're going to look into it. Just asking that question because I do look forward to the meeting to help me with the table to figure out the funds we call for a, a, a blanket breach of the rules. What breach do you do in the what it means, and I'm just wondering if some people you know in screw with that. It would be kind of you know, I didn't write it at the at the end of the meeting that um, people would be given off to have the surgery, but yeah, you get a little bit of the you know, can see something like that you can get in different supplies. We get to a quick bag at the time, there's a lot of things that uh, and um, the certified farm things and the space you can go on about a certain amount of hours and then you go on the nothing really very expensive. But I mean, think the heat's gone out a little bit and then the heart and the energy go out a little bit. And I think that they might actually be affecting people like that over the rain and the things in the middle. So hopefully, if it's still doing any of the lessons, it might be a little bit of a reminder. I think it's going to be certain that this council has seen non compliant behavior for the Yes, it's not compliant to go for a standard purchase and being used to it. Thank you. If I may, I think that um, I think that it's important to remember is that we take an all year round project and the integration. So we start with. Uh, Advice and support, and um, there's a lot of times that things that we need to do, that things that we need to do, and we need to target to that we can use those. Uh, we're at a stage where uh, we're still in the advice and support uh, part, there's, there's uh, you know, crops are going to grow, but animals are on the ground, so that still allows us to provide useful advice, support, reiterate uh, our three uh, pathways, which are, you know, in a productivity. The DMX activity approach that we should be given on the screen. So we don't have to be able to continue to be able to put if we are in a situation where there's uh, an incident and some of the reasons we will follow through and get the other one on the process. But if we take, if we, are, we always have all the and hopefully if you'll check on it, there's a little lot of work that's been done in the paper last two or three years in the text and grading, it's an angular program. So we do. We will use all the tools in the toolbox to provide uh, as much advice, support, and guidance as we can up until the point. And then we are expecting more of that. Tied to the approach or our own best to give them. So, giving the advice to the law, giving the requirements for the poor advice. Yes, in the home. We have started this uh, video, and we sent some bit of advice in the reporting. What was the result of last year? I just sort of a feeling there is um really was uh the seventy eight percent of the list of people actually doing it with the valves. Three years last year, one more one of the other councils that actually had the data from the other jobs. One of the two councils were actually assisted by the last year. The compliance with 190 pages of the CFO deals was pretty good. It um, being a learning year for a lot of people who put just more points in the wrong place and so all of a sudden they had hundreds of thousands of points being used. Um, so it was a learning curve for everyone. So for those people who were able to go back to them directly and just ask, I was just physically possible for it, so it was you know, an admin error. Um, but that has also given us an opportunity to test the reporting that we've been developed here in Bowen itself and puts it alongside the central form so we can be sure that our data is actually being properly checked as we go. What's what the thing has been done by individuals at all and then what what the what did you feel like to provide the data? What did you think it was the best last year for the suppliers because those forms um, there was a little bit of confusion, but it was the consultant to do it, or the person actually had to do it themselves. Um, but on balance, the certified group is the preferred option for a single person to do it. Another question that's been over the topic 
Just a little conundrum, I guess, getting access into 
Yeah, the same as when we have like a reaction and cycling around and it's Yes, well, that, that's a third option that we've been on there's another first spell of the can little bit more expensive during the weekdays, it's not a problem. Now, um, there's the problem by operation. But then there's the accommodation side of it as well, as the same hospital. Yes, thanks for your time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 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 It was not in that part. And the public is good at business and the time of the world. And that's when you can't listen to this. I think if you were thinking of the way what you have. And it's not. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Yes, my